This cool looking pattern is only possible by adding this section of code, allowing the Domino robot to be refilled without resetting the code. But to get here, we almost broke our servo motor and had several code failures figuring out how to navigate the patterns within the code. Eventually, we got the domino dropping pattern worked out to change the distance between each domino, either in a repeating pattern or continuously increasing the distance for each one. Then you can also add the sine wave driving pattern that is still a bit unpredictable. When you combine the two patterns with the refillable code hack, you get this decorative pattern on your floor, depending on how many dominoes you have available. To see how all this works, let's jump into the code. To help you understand what changes were made to the code for the design code, we're actually going to look at the original stock code and the new code to see what changes happened to make the design code work the way it does. The variable section changed quite a bit. Again, we don't need any of the PID stuff. We don't need any of the sensors. And these variables all got changed. Essentially, everything got rewrote other than setting up the motors and the servo. As far as all of these other variables that were added, this helps us to track the new distance that is varying, as well as to understand when we are swerving and when we are not. This chunk right here lets you turn on or off those type of mechanisms for the code, whether you want to vary the distance being dropped or if you want to turn the swerve or the curve on or off. This little section of variables allows you to change how much they are varying, whether it's the spacing or if it's the swerve values, giving you some more control on what that looks like in the end. The magic that allows the design code to work is in the void setup. This section right here, where we add this attach double click function that allows us to use a secondary click method in this button option. By using this, instead of restarting it by doing a reset and then losing your code place, now you just need to double click the trigger button to get the code to start up again and drive. And to make this work, we get rid of this while true loop that creates an infinite loop, preventing you from being able to run any more code. All the variables maintain their values so it knows where it's at in the code and what to do next by how we are storing all the variable values. The two other changes to the void setup allow us two different aspects. The first one, the serial begin, allows us to see what is happening in the serial monitor. Now this caused a problem because when you create the serial print line statements, it actually slows down the loop speed of your loop based on how much time is spent printing out in the serial monitor. At the bottom, we also have this swerve check. This is just checking to see whether or not we are going to be creating the curve or the sine wave. And all it does is it changes the drop distance. So that way, as you're curving, it makes sure that it is clear of the domino before it moves the motor. And we'll see how that works in just a bit. When we take it to void loop, we're gonna see two major differences. In my new updated one, that's the entire void loop. It's all contained in this one section where the original code, the void loop, this is just the section to be able to drive, to calculate, to stay on the line, giving the motor its speed, but you haven't done any of the domino dropping portion yet. You actually have to scroll down a little bit more just to be able to see the section of where it drops the dominoes. As you can see with my updated code, I pushed the driving aspect out into another function to control it a little bit more and only have the domino dropping aspect of it for the most part. While I follow the same idea and concept of when to drop a domino, I use a different variable so that way I can add the spacing aspect of how far I should be dropping between each time. I also added braking to stop the domino robot from moving as the servo moves left and right to be able to drop the domino. Because of how the original code resets and creates an infinite loop, they have a section to move and finish dropping the domino and move to the next section so that way it picks up where it left off on when their code would start when you have to restart it. We don't have to do that because all the variables are maintained in the code where they are at. 
So we just stop the Domino robot by putting on the brakes and then waiting for the double click to let us know when we should pick up where we left off. What you will notice in here are a couple of functions that I've used that I've built to be able to control some of these different aspects. So let's jump up and take a closer look at those functions themselves. In the original code, the distance since last dropped was a big calculation that was all included in the loop section. I created a separate function called call drive with whatever speed I want it to set up as so that way it can then return a value that would go into the distance since last drop variable that is then used for all of the other checks to see whether or not I've driven far enough to drop the domino. The call drive function in the ends returns a value. To return a value in a function, instead of using the void for defining a function, you use the data type that you're going to be returning. By doing this, now you can return an actual value that you've calculated out in this section of code. So what was contained in the void loop, I've pulled this out so that way I can call it a little bit differently and have more control of what it is sending information on. The big thing here is because we use the serial begin, I created a serial print line so that every time that this function gets called, that serial print line gets called as well. So the timing becomes more consistent. Even though it's not the best way to do it, this at least ensures that the serial print line is called every single time you are getting a new distance, which is what was causing the original problem. This bottom section is essentially an exact replication of the previous one. Once you get the speed that you need, you tell what the speed motors should drive, and then you just tell the motors to drive at that speed. You get an updated calculation for your distance since last drop, and that's what you output. The top section though, this tells us whether or not we should be doing the curve driving or a straight driving. So it checks the value that's at the top, which is your initialization of the variable, whether you want to be using the curve or not. You could change that swerve check to a false if you want to drive straight or keep it as true to have the sine wave curve. Once you check against that, it knows that we do want the curve and then gets a new variable update by using the function called swerve, Within this swerve function, it knows how much of the curve you've started, where you're at in that part of the calculation to then update the information to know which motor should be getting what speed, whether it needs to be turning left or right and by how much. Obviously, we need to understand what is happening in this swerve function. So let's jump into that one. You will notice at the top that all of these variables with this swerve will come into play for this swerve function. It gets pretty intense because it's checking multiple things and multiple layers just using if statements. So it's not the cleanest way to do it, but it gets the job done for what we're trying to do in this code. So there are two parts of the curve. There's the actual curve cornering, and then there's the driving straight before you get to the next curve. The way this swerve works is you're going to be turning one wheel more than the other and that allows the curve to happen. But once both wheels are driving the same amount or the same speed, now you know you are going straight. And that's what this checks against. Are both wheels driving the same speed, meaning you're not swerving anymore. Once you hit that, you will then run this little section of driving straight for a certain amount of time, and it will just return a zero. And that's telling you how much to change your top speed. So one motor will go plus five while the other one will go negative five, where now it's staying the top speed for both motors at the same time. This will repeat as many times as you have set up in the straight drive variable at the top. Once you finally hit the reps that you need, it kicks out by changing the hold straight to false and then gives in the initialization of, okay, let's start moving in the other direction for the swerve. The swerve function itself then just identifies where you are at in your swerve value. This tells you how much you need to swerve for the right and the left, and then there's a max level of how much you want to swerve. If you are under that max swerve value, it will increase the one and decrease the other. Once you hit the max swerve, it will inverse that by decreasing the first one and then increasing the other 
to be able to get your motors to drive this curve that you are wanting. Once it knows if it's driving one way or the other, left or right, which is controlled by this swerve direction or DIR, and then you return this value to this code, which then uses that number to subtract or multiply the left and right motor. So that way they are optimized for which way you're trying to drive. The other big distance when you are varying the distance of the dropping is you will see that there is a drop distance multiplied by a spacing factor. The drop distance essentially is how far the domino robot needs to go just to be able to drop a domino right after another. It's essentially the space of one domino and then we multiply by how much spacing distance we want between them. So there is a spacing variable that tracks and holds how much you want to multiply by that drop distance. We update that by using the get spacing function. That doesn't return a value, it just updates this spacing variable in the code that is then used in this section to know how far you want to drive before you drop the next domino. Let's jump up to see the get spacing function. It's quite a simple function. First, it checks, are you varying or not? Again, the variable at the top saying, I want to vary the distance or not, check against that. So this code doesn't maintain a consistent dropping pattern. It's always going to be changing, increasing or decreasing. But if you don't have the varying, it's just going to be increasing more and more until you run out of space or you run out of dominoes. So the max value that you will get is three for the spacing, and then we'll inverse and subtract down. So it tracks whether we are increasing, if you've hit this max, and then it changes the increase to false, which then decreases the value. We can see from here whether or not we should be increasing or we should be decreasing based off of that increase variable that's originally identified at the top and carried through in this section. You can update that spacing to see how big you get before it starts to shrink again. And now that you know how this works, you can update the variables as they are and add your own code to create your own cool patterns. You can create potential other designs by coming up with all the calculations of what you would need to drive for how long and when to drop the dominoes by just giving it all those commands but you can refill the domino as you need and it will remember where you left off to be able to continue that pattern. You don't have that limitation anymore.